In this presentation, we're going to cover earthing, including equipotential and supplementary bonding you are likely to find within existing domestic installations. And we'll also take a look at the changes introduced by the 18th edition that may affect new installations. Earthing and earthing systems. The purpose of earthing within an installation is so that in the event of a fault on the line conductor, which could be either a line to an exposed conductive part, i.e. the metal case of a class one washing machine, or a fault between the line and the circuit protective conductor, that there will be a high enough fault current produced to ensure that the protective device, and this could be a fuse, circuit breaker or RCD, operates automatically within its maximum disconnection time and disconnects the supply from the fault. This disconnection time is usually 0.4 or 5 seconds depending on the type and size of the circuit. Therefore, every conductive part of equipment which is not normally live but could become live during a fault, which is also known as an exposed conductive part, needs to be connected to earth. And this is done via the circuit protective conductor, which connects it to the main earth terminal at the origin of the installation via the consumer unit's earth connection. The earth in the main consumer unit connects to the distributor's supplied earth, which, depending on the type of system, such as on a TNS system, it connects to the supply's separate earth, or on a TNCS system, to the neutral of the incoming supply via a pen conductor. In some instances, the supplier may not be able to provide an adequate earth, and in this case, an earth electrode is placed in the ground and connected to the installation earth, and this supply system is known as a TT system. Circuit protective conductors. The function of the circuit protective conductor, or CPC, is to carry any earth fault current without damaging itself or the installation when an earth fault occurs and is part of the earth fault loop path of the circuit it is associated with. Because it can carry a lot of current for a short period of time, having the correct size of CPC is very important due to the high temperatures that can be reached if an undersized CPC is used. Two methods can be used when selecting the correct size for a CPC as per regulation 543.1.1 of BS 7601 2018 and they are calculated as per 543.1.3 using the formula S equals the square root of I squared times T and then divide that by K. Please have a look at our formula presentation for the correct application of this formula. The second method, which is selected, is done using regulation 543.1.4 along with table 54.7, where the size of the CPC is relative to the size of the line conductor. So, if using copper conductors, and if the line conductor is up to and including 16 millimeters, then the CPC will be the same size. If the line conductor is greater than 16 mil squared, up to and including 35 mm squared, then the CPC will need to be 16 mil squared. And finally, if the line conductor is greater than 35 mm squared, then the CPC will need to be at least half the line conductor size. This method can also be used for selecting the size of the main earth conductor in a domestic installation where the supply tails, line and neutral, are 25 mil squared, then the main earth needs to be at the 16 mil squared. Please note for both methods where uncommon sizes are arrived at by either method, then the next available larger size conductor should be used. Fortunately, Within a domestic installation, the most common cable used is the 70 degree C thermoplastic, good old twin and earth, which has a CPC built into it, whose size has already been calculated using the formula method, again from regulation 543.1.3, and the normal sizes of the CPC in each cable are 
1.5 millimeter squared twin nf has a 1 mil squared cpc 2.5 millimeter squared twin nf has a 1.5 millimeter squared cpc 4 mil squared twin nf has a 1.5 millimeter squared cpc 6 mil squared twin nf that has a 2.5 millimeter squared cpc and 10 millimeter squared twin nf has a 4 mil squared cpc 16 mil which is the largest of the twin nf cables available has a 6 mil squared cpc it's worth noting though that Although the CP sizes are correct in most cases, in certain instances, a larger CPC may be required than the one provided within the cable. The most common example of this is when using a 16 mil square twin earth to feed a remote distribution board. The 6 mil square earth conductor provided may need to be larger, and in some cases, 10 mil squared. Also, a little tip worth remembering is the largest single stranded conductor used is the 2.5 millimeter squared. This is useful when trying to tell the difference between a 6 mil squared twin and earth and a 10 mil squared twin and earth. If the CPC has just one single strand, it's going to be a 6 mil squared twin and earth. But if the CPC is made up of multiple strands, it's more likely to be a 10 mil squared. However, there's always a however, in older red and black twin and earth cables, multiple strand CPC conductors were quite common. Protective equipotential bonding. As we've just seen, the CPC connects any exposed conductive parts to the main earth within an installation to provide protection against electric shock. But also within an installation, we have other large metallic objects such as the water gas and central heating pipes which are classed as extraneous conductive parts as they don't form part of the electrical installation but could become live under fault conditions and if they are not earth they could also introduce an additional earth or zero potential into the building especially if they are metallic parts that enter the building from outside a protective earth known as a main bonding conductor is used to connect these to the main earth of the installation so that in the event of an earth fault within the installation there is no potential difference between the fault location and any extraneous conductive part. The size of the main bonding conductor used depends upon the type of earthing system employed for the installation. See Regulation 544.1 of BS7601 2018. And for a TNS or TT system, the main bonding conductor needs to be at least half the size of the main earth conductor, but not less than 6 mm squared, or larger than 25 mm squared, which when using a 16 mm squared main earth would give you, once it's rounded up, a 10 mm squared main bonding conductor size. For a TNCS system, the size of the main bonding conductor is based upon the size of the supply combined neutral earth conductor or pen conductor using table 54.8. And for an incoming pen conductor of 35 millimeter squared or less, a 10 millimeter squared main bonding conductor size shall be used. Note, the main bonding conductor connection to any pipework, etc., should be within 600 millimeters of the position where the service enters the building and before any branches or T's on the pipework and on the consumer side of any meters. Supplementary equipotential bonding. Supplementary bonding is similar to the main bonding and is done for the same reasons, but Instead of going back to the main earth at the origin of the installation, supplementary bonding conductors link together any exposed conductive parts to any extraneous conductive parts within certain areas where there is an increased risk of electric shock, i.e. special locations such as the bathroom and any other special locations that are listed in part 7 
RPS 7671. The minimum size of any supplementary bonding conductor is 2.5 mm squared if it's provided with any mechanical protection or 4 mm squared if it's not. Although in most cases you'll find that most electrical contractors use 6 mm squared. Changes introduced by the 18th edition within older domestic installations that complied with earlier versions of the wiring regulations, the main bonding and supplementary bonding should be in place. However, within a new installation, due to the introduction of RCDs and new wiring regulations, it's now possible to omit both main and supplementary bonding in a new installation. The emission of main and supplementary bonding as per regulation 411.3.1.2 of BS 7671, a main protective bonding conductor shall be connected to any extraneous conductive part as previously described. However, any metallic pipes entering the building that have an insulated section at their point of entry, i.e. plastic, need not be connected to the main protective bonding. So if the water or gas is coming into the building and it's coming in to the building in plastic and then changes to copper, there's no need to provide any main bonding. The omission of supplementary bonding in the bathrooms has been possible even before the introduction of the 18th edition and providing that your bathroom complies with the requirements of regulation 701.415.2 and all points, which are points four, five, and six, have been met, and they are point four. If required, all main protective bonding is in place, so if, if it's required, it should be there. All final circuits are protected by a 30 milliamp RCD within the bathroom, say, and all extraneous conductive parts within the location are effectively connected to the equal potential bonding and this could be checked by measuring the resistance between any exposed conductive parts and any extraneous conductive parts and the maximum value for this resistance if using a 30 milliamp rcd is 1667 ohms and C regulation 415.2.2 for the formula for that. So as we have seen, earthing, bonding and supplementary bonding are very important parts of any electrical installation as they provide protection under fault conditions. However, main bonding and supplementary bonding may be omitted where the installation meets certain other requirements within the wiring regulations that make the installation safer.